Rotational inertia. Rotational inertia is the measure of an object's resistance to change in its rotation. Okay, um, you've all experienced this, uh, or maybe you have, uh, if you've ever played baseball and uh, you've gotten the bat. And let's say the only bat they have is this big, heavy bat. And the big guy on the team can pick that up and he can really swing that. He can really get that to accelerate. You're a little guy and you're having a hard time getting this big, heavy bat to accelerate. You just don't have the ability to apply that same force, right? Well, you can apply that same force uh, and you can do that by choking up on the bat. So instead of grabbing it down here, you're going to grab it up here. And what you're doing is you are decreasing the radius of that rotation. And that's going to make it easier to get that bat up to speed and to get a good hit and get on base. Okay? So the formula we're going to use for rotational inertia is I, that's the symbol for rotational inertia, equals the mass times the radius squared. Okay? So again, the longer that radius, the more rotational inertia. Okay. And the units we're going to use is kilograms times metered squared. So let's look at some problems you'd be asked to solve using rotational inertia. Okay. Uh, the first problem over here, what's the rotational inertia of a three kilogram ball revolving around a pole four meters away? So the radius is four meters, the mass of the ball is three kilograms, and they're asking you for the rotational inertia. So this is pretty straightforward if you can just remember this formula. Okay? So rotational inertia is the mass times the radius squared. And let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. I have 3 kilograms times the radius squared is 4 meters squared. Okay? So 4 meters squared is 16 meters squared times 3 kilograms. So my rotational inertia here is going to be 16 times 3, which is 48 kilograms times metered squared. Okay? So there's my answer for that first one. Lots of times they won't ask you just for the rotational inertia. They'll maybe give you the rotational inertia, and they'll give you one of these two values, and they'll ask you to solve for that. Okay? Well, that's no problem. We can just put in the values that we have and solve in a similar way. So let's look at another example over here. How far from the axis, so I want to know what the radius is, is a 4 kilogram ball with a rotational inertia of 64 kilograms times meters squared. Okay? So let's put the same formula in, I equals mr squared, but this time they're giving us the rotational inertia, they're giving us the mass, and we have to solve for r. Okay? So let's put those values in. We've got 64 equals, again, I don't know what r is, but I do know what my mass is. My mass is 4 kilograms. Okay? So again, if I want to simplify this equation, I'm going to divide by 4 kilograms and divide this by 4 kilograms. And I'm going to get, reducing that, r squared is going to equal 64 divided by 4 is 16. And my kilograms cancel. And I get meters squared. Okay? Well, 16 meters squared is equal to what meters? So my r for this, if I simplify that, r equals 4 meters. So in this case, r is 4 meters. Okay. So this is how you could solve two different types of problems uh, involving rotational inertia.